أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In order for Allah to test me, He has to allow me the capacity to do the evil. If you're the free. Yeah, if I didn't right, do the so evil. So you, you look upon it, life is just a test. If you pass the test, you go to heaven. Uh, no, it's more than the abit. It. It's more than the abit. It, you, your life is a test. It's, yeah. it's, it's simply what you're saying, but life is a test, right? But it's, it's a test to know God. That's the purpose. The ultimate purpose is to know and worship God, right? That's why you're here. Because when you do that, you will achieve fulfillment. Yeah. You will achieve fulfillment, right? And the, uh, the afterlife is a reward that Allah gives you. Not because of your work, because of His mercy. Right? right. Because so, of His mercy, because you achieve mercy. that. So if, so if He's merciful, yes. if you do wrong, yeah. can you then still get into heaven? That's a good question. And the answer is, Islam is very much opposite to Christianity when it comes to the concept of we're born sinners. We don't come to people and say, oh, you're born sinner, you're this, you're evil. We don't have that. We say to people, you're born pure as a baby, this baby. Sure, yeah. Pure. Yeah, yeah, but that's not what they believe in the origin sin. You, you're already... that, that, that's, yeah. that's down to them. But as yeah. I said, that's why I don't you go with, that. with yeah, you know? any everything. And yeah, I, you know, I can take a little bit of and say, right, for instance, my mate is Persian and yeah. he's, he's, he doesn't see himself as a Muslim. Yeah. You know, Iran's the Islam, Islamic Republic, but yeah, he doesn't yeah. see himself as a Muslim. He sees yeah. himself as a Zoroastrian. Yeah. And he said that, you know, they've really got three things to do. Speak good, yeah, speak yeah, yeah, good, and yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. And that, that seems so perfect. Okay. Do you know what I mean? But is it realistic? So sometimes, sometimes, you know, Muslims it, are, are pretty realistic. Is it realistic mm. to be 100% a good Muslim all the time? Is that realistic? That's why I was answering that question right now. <laughs> I was just answering you know what it. what I mean? I was answering it. Can I answer it? Yeah, I was just answering it. Yeah. Sorry. So don't worry about it. So I was saying we're born pure. That's the default position. Okay. Allah, Prophet Muhammad told us you're born upon fitra. Fitra is an innate disposition that Allah created us on just to submit, to know his existence and to submit to him. Right? Submit to his laws. We believe everyone is born Muslim from that sense, submitting to Allah. Because the word Muslim means submitting to God. So everyone is born in a pure state. Then, the Prophet said their parents make you Christian, make you Jew, make you that. So we say as Muslims, if you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you deficient. Allah did not create us perfect. He knew you were going to make sins and make mistakes, right? So we, we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that sin actually gets you closer to Allah. In what sense? When I sin, when I make a mistake, I repent, I come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My, my relationship gets stronger with Allah. When I come back, when I repent, when I seek His forgiveness. In comparison to, for example, if I just do sins, I never come back. I never know Allah. Yeah, that, that makes yeah. sense. That yeah. make and sense. and we, have, we have the concept of repentance. Yeah? So you can be forgiven for, for sins with these conditions. A, you stop the sin. So I cannot be uh, killing or stealing or raping and this and that and say I repent and I'm still doing it. I have to stop first. Yeah? You stop the sin. Number two, you regret the sin and admit it. Yeah? In your heart, yeah. which only God knows. Yeah. Number three, you have no intention of coming back. I'm not thinking tomorrow I'm going to do it again, yeah, now yeah, I'm yeah, repenting. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. And number four, number four, if you took a right to someone, you give it to him. Because in you Islam, what, right of someone, you have to, re to re repay it to him. Because we say there's two types of sins. One against God and one against creation. For example, if I steal your glasses, yeah, that's a sin, right? I have to, repent, to return it to you in order for my repentance to be accepted. Okay. So that's what, yeah. So if, all right, okay, so say for instance somebody's a rapist, yes. how are they going to repent to the actual person that they've raped? That's a good question, that's a good question. Now, how so, can they give back something that's why, that they've taken? Because they've taken good question. part of the person's soul. Very good question. Yeah. That's why we have uh, what we call hudud. A lot of people say call it sharia law. That's just a part of, of laws of punishment in Islam. So every transgression has a, a punishment that is, uh, uh, that is befitting to it. And who decides it? Allah decides it, right? So we don't decide these, these kind of things. But in the, in the same point, we understand that this life is a test. Therefore, that person who's been harmed is not going to live eternally for earth. There will be a time where he will leave this life, where God will reward him for his patience and reward him for what happened to him. So that's an important vision to keep in mind when you think about good and bad. People take the vision of the afterlife from there. Now, when it comes to raping, for example, right? If you're, if you're, we, we have like punishments for adultery, which is pretty similar to the Old Testament. We don't, we don't have difference when it comes to that. But there is a lot of restrictions. Yeah, but there is restrictions. Yeah, but there is restrictions. It's not like the Old Testament. So the Old Testament, they say, that you just stone them and you can stone them. Yeah? In Islam, it don't. Islam says, number one, there has to be four male 
Muslims, men, witnessing the act of penetration. The act of penetration? Yes. They have to see the act itself. Of adultery. As it to be considered proof right. that such a thing happened. Because anyone can come and say, this person did this to me. Okay. So, so we go with the evidence, basically. Yeah. Right. Go with the evidence. But yeah. there's always flaws in there. Because in certain countries, say, for instance, Pakistan, yes. Afghanistan, wherever, Saudi Arabia. Have you been there? Any of these countries? I've not been to Okay, there. but tell me what you think. I've been to Palestine. Yeah, okay, okay, sure. All right. But, uh, so, from what we're led to believe, as you say, you made a good point, I haven't been there, so I haven't yes. seen, I've been to India, but yes. I've never been to Pakistan. I'll so, tell you why I ask you about that as well, because there's an so, important point. So, certain things that we get to see, yeah. there, there could be no proof, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, Sorry, I know I'm talking a lot of time. Know, <laughs> there was a woman, um, yeah. she was, oh God, I can't remember the details. What did she do? She was doing something, she was handing out something outside a mosque in Pakistan. Yes, and? And basically there was, a, there was a guy there that was, he didn't agree with what she was handing out and he said that it was, uh, what do you call it when you're sinning against Islam? Haram? Haram no, is the worst of it. Yeah, I, I think it was a bit worse. Haram just means impermissible. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I think it was saying worse. No, it was something uh, blasphemous. 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 Uh, what she was doing. She uh, wasn't doing nothing blasphemous. And okay. This was proven, you know. Did he? Like they killed her. They sure. beat her to death. Uh, have, have you seen that with your own eyes? Do you have proof? No, that, that, I'll tell you why I'm asking Not this question. Not with my own eyes, but I did yes. see the video. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you why I'm asking this question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a very important question. Yeah. You see the propaganda against Muslims in the media. I don't have to tell you about I see I'm sure propaganda you see. against everyone. Yeah. Right? But, but, against everyone. No, no, no. Religious groups. I'll give you an example. When something happens, they say Muslim killed, raped, stole, did, etc. Yeah? When someone else does it, they say English man, European man, uh, British man, they don't say Christian, Hindu. Jewish. How many times did you read the news and see Christian did A? Or Jewish person did A? Or um, B person? That is, that, is, that is selective against Muslims. If you look I at it with an the objective point there, of view. There is some, there is some selective uh, views against Muslims where they emphasize that they're all Muslim. There is some. No, I'm saying, have you seen when it says Christian did it? Jewish person. Can you give me one news when they say that ter Christian terrorist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Christian yeah, terrorist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you please show me? One, even one paper of the UK. I, no, I can't. Of the UK. No, but when the, when the war was on Do in Do you know how Lebanon, many I can show you of saying Muslim terrorists? When the war was on in the Lebanon. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Christian militia. <laughs> Christian militia, yeah, that's yeah. how they were, they were yeah. No, I mean here, when a, when a crime happens in the West, in the country. I'm saying here, there is a point, there is a conflict that media wants to make. Muslims are a group of extremists, that's what they want to say. Muslims are a group of extremists who do it ABC, and you should be aware of them, their religion is extreme, etc. But I'm sorry, I just want to answer your question, the point, yeah. question you made. Cool. Yeah. When it comes to Pakistan, I, when someone like me been to these countries in the Middle East, like Saudi Arabia, these countries, is that your, I, where your sorry? heritage is from? No, but I've been there. But where are you yeah, from? Yeah, I've been Which to Morocco. I've been to Egypt. I've been uh, to uh, to. I I me personally, I'm half Egyptian, half Moroccan. Half, half Moroccan, Egyptian, half, half Egyptian, half Moroccan. Right. But I've been to these countries well, as well. I've got a lot of yeah. Egyptian friends in there. Actually, nicest people you can ever. No, be, thank you. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah. And that's we have twenty. To we have twenty million, uh, twenty million Christians in in in. Egypt. The president of Egypt actually built them the biggest cathedral in the Middle East. Yeah. They, just recently, like one or two years ago. Coptic Christians. Yeah, yeah, Coptic Christians, yeah. Which were there even before Muslims went went there, yeah. So because yeah, Christianity is two thousand years old, Islam yeah. is fourteen hundred, is it? Not really, but I'll come back to that. Okay. <laughs> I'll come okay. back. Hey, no problem, I'll come back. No, up. that's why I like talking to people because yeah, you're educated. Yeah, of course, no problem. So what I was trying to say is this thing. if there is a driving law, it says stop when the light is red. And I break the, the light. Is the law wrong or the individual? If you break the law, then you're wrong. If a Muslim breaks the Islamic law and does something which is incorrect, like an example that you're bringing forward, we don't know how much true it is, but I say if it was true, right? If a Muslim does something wrong, is upon the Muslims, not upon Islam. I'm here to defend the idea of Islam, which I believe is perfect. In Muslims are not perfect. Islam is perfect, right? Okay, and yeah, that's these, a very good way of putting yeah, it. And these are two different things. So if right. someone has a problem, please bring me from the scripture something which is wrong or something which has a, an 
issue. That's number one, yeah? You have another book called a hadith, is it? Book hadith is the statements of the Prophet. So okay. we separate the words of the Prophet from the words of Allah. The Quran is 100 percent the words of God. Right, right. Word for word the words of so verbatim. The hadith verbatim. By the Prophet. Yes. Yeah. Hadith is people recorded the words of the Who's Prophet. A mere mortal, but of course, course you see him as a prophet. No, but he was a mortal that receives revelation. It's a difference. We believe that he was infallible in delivering the message. Meaning that if he says commandment to do or don't do, then it's revelation by God. If he makes a mistake, God will correct him. He cannot make mistakes when it comes to revelation. Right? Daily life things, that's a different issue, right? But revelation, God gives him guidance to tell revelation. Yeah. So it's not just any human being. That's the difference between a prophet and a human, definitely. Yeah. Prophet gets revelation, a human doesn't get revelation. Now coming back because we went to so many different points, I'm yeah, trying to get yeah, to deal. <laughs> I'll try to deal to deal with that to deal with that with the points, yeah. So yeah. So Islam, nowhere does Islam say if someone hands it or leaves it, even if disbelief, you kill him. There is no law such law in Islam. Yeah? So that it depends what that person was, was handing out, I have no idea. But in Islam there's no law about handing out things and this and that. So if they're doing that, that thing is not from Islamic law, even if they did it, right? So I'm here to defend the idea. Islam says there is witnesses, four witnesses male practicing meaning if i spy on someone i look from the window i see them doing doing the act of, of, uh, of adultery my uh, my testimony is not accepted there has to be three other males no 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 do you know why even if there were four because islam tells me not to spy if i spy i'm not a practicing muslim i'm not a practicing muslim my testimony is not going to be accepted so you see that's just a very yeah no problem me, just, ah, don't worry, don't worry. Just broke my don't worry, don't worry. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry. Day, don't worry. Anyway. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah, be fast. For eight but it's hard, years. isn't it? it depends I have on how one long. One meal a day. Ah, okay. So, oh, mad. You do the oh, mad yeah, diet, oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for 23 hours, all yeah. I do is drink water. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. You know, so, so if they spying, then they're going against the Quran because Allah says, "Wala just says to do not spy." So we want people who are practicing. Do you know how would that happen? Only if you're walking and you see someone in the public place doing it. Yeah, the, as which a, would be ridiculous. Yeah. That's why in the whole Islamic period, and I do not know personally of a case of evidence have been established in the Islamic society in an Islamic community and the punishment have been applied on them. Okay, so but but people have came repenting as Muslims, saying we want the punishment to be, we want to be purified. Do you think, yeah. as an intelligent, open-minded human being, yes. that when obviously uh, Christianity, which I don't agree with, yes, you know all of it, some of it's oh. great. Some is beautiful, as in Islam, same thing. And I'll come to this idea because it's, right? it's an important idea. See the way yeah. that they had the Old Testament and then they New Testament. progressed and they had the New Testament. Yes. Do you think that Islam could reform and grow in any other way? Or do Good you think question. it's perfect in the way that it was set out Good in question. the old days? Good question. Very, very, very excellent question. Now, I want to make two points. First point is that Christianity was never reformed by Jesus. Christianity was reformed by a person named Paul. Paul, Saint Paul. Saint Paul came and changed the religion, claiming that he received revelation from God. Whether that claim is true or not, that's a different discussion. Yeah? So he was like a prophet as well. Uh, in some, some Christians do believe he's a prophet. Yeah, and some believe that Jesus. Uh, I, I believe Jesus, not Paul. So I believe Paul went against the teachings of Jesus. So for example, Jesus it says in Matthew chapter 5 verse 17 I have not come to destroy the law or the prophets of the Old Testament I have come to fulfill for whoever breaks a dot a tittle of the law shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven and then he said unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees the Jews who have 613 laws he says you have to be better than them yeah in yeah, order for you, yeah, there, yeah. In, order, in order for you to enter paradise he says you have to be better than them so Jesus has said you you follow the law Paul came he said you don't need law, you just need to believe in God, right? So that's an idea of Jesus, First, the first point. Number two, the word reform in English, it applies to something that is not perfect that you want to make perfect. So something has some sort of deficiencies, has some sort of mistakes that needs to be fixed, some issues we need to deal with. And nothing can come from God and be deficient. With basic logic, nothing can come from a creator for all people, for all times, and he claims that. Okay, can I ask and you one more that? thing as yeah, well? Sure, sure. Okay. These books and these scriptures were written or passed down by prophets or sure. whoever you want yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can give you thousands of years ago or hundreds, we say. 
Is there any way, seen as the word human, and we're not perfect, and none of us are perfect, of course, yeah. that these have been passed on, and some of it has got slightly twisted? Very, 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 I, like, I love this question. You know, you know why I love this question? Because we are in Ramadan, I'm sure you're aware. Yeah, yeah it's a month of fasting. Yeah, yeah, I'll just quote mine. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Then he's warm, <laughs> no. strong as anything. <laughs> no problem. So, so I'm saying, in Ramadan, you know we have a tradition called Tarawih prayer. It's the night prayer. Tarawih is an Arabic word. It means the night prayer, yeah? In, you can do that today, yeah? After uh, Isha time, which is around 9 o'clock or something, any mosque in the UK that is open, they recite one part of the Quran, which is 30 parts. So every night we recite a part of the Quran, we finish the whole Quran in Ramadan. This tradition has been from the time of the companions in doing these things. Right. They're finishing the Quran. Now, from the time of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, the Quran came to us not just in a written text, it came to us in an oral text. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, the way we preserve our scripture. Prophet, he recited the Quran. His companions memorized the Quran and... He, he was illiterate, was he? He was illiterate, yes. His companions memorized the Quran, word for word, because they used to rely on memorization. The Arabs, which is an idea people do not understand how the Arabs live. There was around 70 people who were illiterate maybe in Mecca. There was very little people who were literate who could read or write. Majority were illiterate in Mecca because they used to rely on memorization. The, scholars, the scholars were the ones that could read and write. Okay. No, everyone used to mem Oh yeah, scholars used to read. The people read. who learn, people yeah. who learn. Yeah. Yeah. But majority of the people were relying on memorization. Poetry, they memorized thousands yeah. of lines of poetry. around the fire and it's all yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. memorize yeah. 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 When you train the memory, it's a muscle. When you train it, it yeah. becomes stronger. They had the best of memories, right? They memorized thousands and hundreds of thousands of words, right? So these people, Quran is not that big anyways for them to memorize, right? So Prophet Muhammad, he recited the Quran, companions memorized it, and the Quran came down in 23 years. So when was it years. first written after his initial... Yeah, yeah, I'm coming to that, oh, right, I'm coming sorry. to that. So the Quran came in 23 years, yeah? Every time a verse was revealed, the Prophet brought people who called the writers of Revelation. They write it down and memorize it, and the community memorize it and prays with it. Every prayer we recite the Quran, daily lives, yeah? Then. Uh, until the Quran was completed after 23 years. It took 23 years. 23 years. When he first it was completed. Yes. It. Okay. Then, then at the time of the first Caliphate, who was two years after the Prophet, he collected the the uh, the, uh, the leaves and the things that they write the Quran on. Right? Collected all of the Quran basically. Oh. Yeah, the parchments of the Quran, the full Quran, he collected it and he preserved it. Then came the time of the third caliphate, who was maybe 20 years after the Prophet or something like so, that. What does the actual word caliphate mean? A leader, Islamic leader. Yeah, just like a president, you could say. Yeah. So the, uh, the Muslim uh, uh, Uthman, the Muslim caliphate, the third Muslim caliphate, at his time, he decided to standardize the version of the Quran, make a standardized text basically. Yeah. Based on the text that is originally written on the time of Prophet Muhammad. So he just wrote it in a Mus'haf form, like the ones you see today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why it's called the Uthmanic manuscripts, or Uthmanic Mus'hafs, yeah? So that was maybe 20, 20, some 20, 30 years after the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have the Quran from the first century full, intact, written, but we don't care about the written. You know why? Because we have oral tradition of memorization from the time of Prophet Muhammad. When he was given his last ceremony, there was over 120,000 uh, uh, 20, uh, people listening to his lecture, 120,000 people listening to his last lecture. And he used to, re to recite the Quran in every prayer. People used to memorize and learn from other people who memorize the Quran and correct each other. That's why any Imam in the mosque, if he makes some mistakes, people behind him, they correct him because they memorize the Quran. I can recite to you right now, chapter one and two and three and four or five if you want. If you have time, you can recite it to you word for word now. No, no. So we memorize the scripture. If you throw every manuscript in the sea, after two hours, you're gonna write the whole manuscript for you. So, yeah, right. yeah, word for word. There's a lot of people that memorize. Millions, so it millions, millions of people yeah. today, Arabs and non-Arabs, memorize the Quran. Yeah. Six-year-old yeah. children, because Allah made it easy for memorization. So the point is this, yeah? Quran is impossible for you to change it or manipulate it because we have the oral tradition and the written tradition as a secondary thing, but we have it. And the, the very important point is what? That we don't just have uh, people claiming they memorize. We have something called ijaza. Ijaza is when if I finish the Quran, I have to take it from a teacher. I cannot take it from the mushaf. I have to take it from a teacher. He has to teach me word for word. Yeah. When I take it from the teacher, that's a tradition from the time of the Prophet. Each person takes it from his teacher going to the Prophet. So we, I take it from my teacher. My teacher gives me something called ijaza. She has my name, his name, name of his teacher, his teacher, his teacher, all the way to Prophet Muhammad. We know all the people there. 
that we know the biographies of the people who transmitted the Quran to us. We know what their community said about them. Their own Asana. We have tens of thousands of, uh, if not hundreds of thousands of chains. Every memorizer has a jaza. So can you change something like this? It'd be difficult, but there are. It would are be impossible, some, I would say. Yeah, no. Yeah. But there are some people that have a, it's inside, yeah. a twisted form of whatever religion is in the uh, If I change. You? No. You, then so, no, no, I'm saying, I say, if I change, yeah. someone, a, a millions memorize. Yeah. Who cares about, they yeah, will correct me, yeah. I'm yes. saying there are people that have got some other kind of agenda or yes, yes. some twisted like, ideology. How would they change it? They, 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 they couldn't change that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But they could perceive it in a different way. That's good, that's I agree. Uh, that's, that's a different, yeah. so now so it's interpretation. We're talking about interpretation. Exactly. Yeah. If you perceive something differently, yeah. differently from yeah. everyone else, then you can twist it to your own sort of agenda. We have a, a solution. We have a solution. Christians do it, Muslims do it, yeah. Jews do it. Of course, you know, atheists do it. And all of them. Yeah, yeah. They're all, there's yeah. loads of nuts yeah, and of everything. You, Can you're, I help? you're a good person, I know that. You're I, I try to be, I wouldn't everything. say I am. No, I know you yeah. are, I know yeah. you are, right? But there are people out there, as I, I said to your friend, that's why he's like, when he's like talking to me, I said, yes. Yeah. I've just come from the march. For our freedoms, my freedom, your freedom, Muslim freedom, everybody's freedom. Today, so that, today, yeah. right? We, I've been to almost every march against this lockdown. Yeah. Because lockdowns, vaccines, vaccine passports, basically, it's a scam. Then it's a scam. Zionist puppet masters, and and when I say Zionists, not all Zionists are Jews, and not all Jews. Are yeah, Zionists, of course, right? Zionists are the people who want the state in Israel. These, these are the people in, in, in Palestine. Spread it, they want to Palestine. spread it out. Yeah. Oh, they want Palestine to be uh, 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 their own state and they want to take it? Yes. That's the Zionist, that's the Zionist and, Yeah, but, position. But, but not only that, they ultimately want one world army, one world government, one world currency. Yeah. And they want so to control. I, our, this is the beginning. What they're doing now is the beginning of this, right? Our, our position personally, when it comes to this kind of, uh, of uh, like vaccination, all of these things, me personally as a person, yeah, you, uh, which I advise my brothers to do as well, is not to have have either a negative or an affirmative stance. That's what I say to them. Why? I say, I know personally doctors who are qualified, who are people practicing fear, God fearing. They will not lie. I know them. Muslims in Muslim countries, let alone here, yeah. leave the West, yeah. right? Who said there is a virus? There is such a thing exists as a virus. Yeah? Don't worry, don't worry. Yeah, there is a virus. Yeah. I so, agree. So, yeah, I, I will explain what right. I mean. Yeah. So there is a virus. Therefore, if I advocate do or don't, my my words can have a bad or a good effect. Positive or negative. Exactly, which I do not know. So I say to the people, just make you with your mind. yeah, make your own mind, do your own thing. I don't agree with anything that should be forced on the people though. That's what I say. I say people should be allowed to make their own minds. If you want to take it, take it. If you don't want to take it, don't take it. No one should force it on you, right? So that's not my personal position. But coming to the to the, to the back to the, to the point, the interpretation point, which is the point you're you're asking about. In Islam, we have a solution for that. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to follow the companions. Companions were the people who lived with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu who met him and he died, he died as believers. Why? They were there with the verses was revealed. They were, they were uh, speaking the purest form of the Arabic language, which was the Quran was revealed in. They understand it more, more than anyone. They had the Prophet as their teachers. Yeah, yeah. So we don't, we depend on interpretation based on them. We don't depend on interpretation or based on our own subjective yeah, understanding. Yeah, yeah. We take the interpretation from the companions. Therefore, you cannot have an issue. Why? Because the Prophet told us to follow the companions. Allah told us to follow the companions. Take their interpretation, follow their, their, their way of life, and follow the Prophet's way of life. If someone comes and say, oh, the verse means this, I'll say, who said that before you? Where do you bring? Allah told us to follow the Prophet. Where is your evidence it means this? Does it mean this in the Arabic? The Prophet didn't say this. The companions doesn't say that. So we have that restriction. We also have another restriction. That Allah said if believers disagree on something, believers, if they disagree on something, return it back to Allah and the Messenger. Meaning, if I say, you have to do this. In Islam, we teach, if someone tells you, you have to do this, you ask him, where is the evidence for that in the Quran, or did the Prophet say that? So no more, uh, there is no open, we don't open the door for what is called interpretation. 